this semester we have to move with inorganic chemistry and i am very sure you all are very fond of inorganic chemistry so the topic does not make any much problem to you so we move to our topic so our topic is coordination chemistry an interesting topic in inorganic chemistry in this topic we have to see what are coordination compounds their iupac nomenclature their stability their isomerism and various theories used to explain the structure and properties of coordination compounds what are coordination compounds coordination compounds are a class of compounds in which the central metal atom or ion is coordinated by chemical bonds with non metal atoms or group of non metal atoms and they are called ligands that means for a coordination compound there should be a central metal atom or ion and this central metal atom or ion should be bonded to a large number of oppositely charged ions or neutral molecules they are called ligands and these ligands are bonded to the central metal ion or atom through coordinate bond and we know in a coordinate bond the electron donor atom will be donating a pair of electron to an acceptor atom hence we can say the central metal atom which is electron deficient act as a lewis acid so they are electron acceptors now what are ligands ligands are donating pair of electron to the central metal atom hence we can say ligands are lewis bases so a lewis base having electron pairs or acting as electron pair donors donate pair of electron to the central metal atom hence a coordinate bond is established that means we could say in any coordination compound there should be a donor atom called a ligands or a group of donor atoms called ligands and there always should be a central metal atom to accept the pair of electron and hence to form a coordinate bond now we have to see how a coordination compound is differentiated from a double salt we know in a coordination compound the constituent particles are central metal atom or ion and ligands once a coordination compound is formed it neither show the property of the central metal ion nor the chemical property of the ligands that means the coordination compound retains its identity in solution as well as in their solid state but if i take a double salt that double salt will decompose into the constituent ions in the particular solution phase or when dissolved in a particular solvent now see that difference is the main difference between coordination compound and double salt so coordination compounds retain their identity in solid state as well as in dissolved state while double salt could not retain its identity see i am taking an example here mo salt in mo salt i have iron sulfate ion and ammonia molecule if i dissolve this mo salt in water it show the property of fe2 plus ion ammonium ion and sulfate ion but if i make a coordination compound between iron and ammonia molecule 
it will neither show the property of ion nor the property of ammonia molecule. The major difference between double salt and coordination compound is listed here. Now, we could see how a coordination compound should be represented. As I told you, for any coordination compound, there should be a central metal atom surrounded by a large number of ligands. So, here we could see a coordination compound made up of iron as the central metal atom or ion surrounded by six ligands cyanide ions and the whole is neutralized by four K plus ion. So when this particular coordination compound is formed, this coordination compound neither show the property of ion nor the property of Cn minus ion. That means central metal atom or ion combines with the ligand to form a coordination sphere represented in a square bracket. See here, in that square bracket, we have metal atom or ion and the ligand. They join together and retain their identity. This coordination sphere may have certain charges. That charge is neutralized by these positive ions, K plus ion. Hence, this whole complex or coordination compound is neutral. That means, for any coordination compound, there should be, there must be a coordination sphere. And that coordination sphere contains a central metal atom or ion and ligands. If the coordination sphere is having charges, it has to be neutralized by another sphere called ionization sphere and this ionization sphere should be negative ions or positive ions. Now see here, the central metal atom ion is surrounded by 6 Cn. Hence, the coordination number in this coordination compound is 6. So, we could define coordination number is defined as the number of ligands surrounding the central metal atom or ion in a coordination sphere or coordination compound. If I take this particular coordination compound and dissolving in water, it will give me 4K plus ions. So here ions are produced. Hence, this is the ionization sphere. Here, iron and Cn minus are remaining together and hence it is called coordination sphere. See, this is the central metal atom and these are the six ligands. The ligands are joined to the central metal atom through coordinate bond. So here I have the central metal atom cobalt which is surrounded by 6 ammonia molecule. Hence the coordination number is 6. This central metal atom and the ligand together called coordination sphere. It is having 3 positive charge and these 3 positive charge are neutralized by 3 Cl minus ion. That means these 3 Cl minus ions are in the ionization sphere. Always the coordination sphere is represented by this square bracket. See here, chromium NH3 six times. Chromium is the central metal atom. Ammonia molecules the ligand. Six ammonia molecules are there. Hence the coordination number is six. And Cl3 or three Cl minus ions are present in the ionization sphere. The coordination sphere is represented by square bracket. And the ionization sphere is represented outside the coordination sphere.
So we know in a coordination sphere there should be a central metal atom or ion surrounded by ligands. Ligands could be negatively charged, positively charged or even neutral molecules. And the central metal atom could be neutral or even positively charged. Now see here, I have a particular complex here. In this particular complex, I have cobalt as the central metal atom or ion with a three positive charge combined with a six ammonia molecule which are neutral. Hence, when the cobalt is combining with ammonia, I am getting a coordination sphere with three positive charges. Hence, this is a complex ion. Why it is an ion? Because there is a resulting positive charge. So, this is a cationic complex. And this cationic complex is neutralized by three negatively charged ions in their ionization sphere. So, we could say the complex ion could be cationic or anionic. See, in this particular case, the coordination sphere is bearing a two negative charge. Hence, this is a anionic complex ion. For a anionic complex ion, it will be neutralized by two positively charged ions. Hence, the complex ion could be cationic or anionic. Now see, we are classifying the coordination compounds or complex compounds as cationic complex, neutral complex, anionic complex and both cationic and anionic complex. In cationic complex, the central metal atom is chromium bonded with four water molecule and the coordination sphere is having a three positive charge. Hence, it is a cationic complex and this three positive charge is neutralized by three Cl minus ion. Now move here. This is an anionic complex. Platinum bonded with the six chloride ion and the coordination sphere bears a two minus charge. Hence it is an anionic complex and this two minus charge is neutralized by two K plus ions. Now see here, this is a neutral complex. Pt4 plus is neutralized by 4 Cl minus ion and this whole belong to a coordination sphere and hence this is an example for a neutral complex compound. And finally we have, this is a coordination compound in which the cationic part is neutralized by a anionic part. That means both the coordination spheres are positive and negatively charged. Hence, they get neutralized to form a coordination compound. So, we have classified complex compounds or complex ions into anionic complexes, cationic complexes and neutral complexes. Further, we have to think about some other type of complexes. So, see, I have given you examples for cationic complexes, anionic complexes and neutral complexes. Next is homoleptic complexes. In these type of complexes, the coordination sphere contains only one type of ligand. See here, K4, Fe, Cn6. Here in the coordination sphere, all the ligands are same. Hence, it is called a homoleptic complex. Now, take here heteroleptic complexes. Here, the coordination sphere contains two types of ligands. What are they? NH3 ammonia and Cl minus. So, this is an example for a heteroleptic complexes because the coordination sphere contains two types of ligand. Another classification is mononuclear complexes. That means, 
the coordination sphere contains only one type of or one central metal atom or ion see the example here the central metal atom is ion there is only one central metal atom or ion that is fe but in case of polynuclear complexes the coordination sphere should contain two or more metal atom or metal ion that means polynuclear complexes contains two central metal atom or ions see here the example in this particular complex we have one cobalt atom here another cobalt atom here see here cobalt cobalt hence this is an example for a polynuclear complexes We have seen what are coordination compounds, what is the difference between coordination compound and double salt, what are complex ions, what are the different types of complex ions. And now we have to go towards ligands. And we know ligands are atoms or group of atoms which donate lone pairs of electron to the central metal ion or central metal atom that means the ligand should contain a lone pair of electron that has to be donated to the vacant orbitals of metal ion or atom to form a coordinate compound now we have to discuss what are the types of ligands or different classification of ligands based on the charge present on the ligands ligands are classified into three they are negative negative ligands positive ligands and neutral ligands negative ligands example are cn minus ion in this particular cn minus ion nitrogen n is having the negative charge or lone pair of electron br minus cl minus and oh minus these are negative ligands moving to positive ligands basically three positive ligands are identified one is no plus called nitrosonium ion the second one is no2 plus which is called nitronium ion and the third one is nh3 plus nh2 which is called hydrazinium ion so these three are the basic positive ligands in coordination chemistry now moving to neutral ligands they does not have positive charge or negative charge example carbon monoxide water nh3 edta etc now second type of classification is based on the number of donor atom present in the ligand if the ligand contains only one donor atom then it is called a unidentate ligand example you take nh3 in this nh3 molecule the nitrogen atom is the donor atom which contains a lone pair of electron so in nh3 there is only one donor atom that is the nitrogen atom hence nh3 is an example for a unidentate ligand if the ligand contains two donor atom it is a bidentate ligand example ethylene diamine you see here this is the structure of ethylene diamine and in ethylene diamine nh2 ch2 ch2 nh2 two donor atoms are there one is this nitrogen atom having a lone pair of electron and second one is this nitrogen atom having another lone pair of electron so this contain two 
donor atoms. Hence, ethylene diamine is an example for a bidentate ligand. See another example, oxalate ion, C2O4, 2 minus. See, this oxygen atom carrying a negative charge is having a lone pair of electron. Similarly, this oxygen atom is also having a lone pair of electron. That means, in this oxalate ion molecule, two donor atoms are there. Hence, it is an example for a bidentate ligand. Ligands with more than two donor atoms are called polydentate ligands. So, polydentate ligands should contain more than two donor atoms. Polydentate ligands are again classified into tridentate ligands, tetradentate ligands, pentadentate ligands, and hexadentate ligands. If the ligand is having three donor atom, it is an example for a tridentate ligand. The best example is diethylene triamine, which contains three donor atom. Now, tetradentate ligands. Tetradentate ligands should contain four donor atoms. Example is triethylene tetraamine. And pentadentate ligands are ligands which should or must contain five donor atoms. Example is ethylene diamine triacetic acid. If the ligand contains six donor atoms, it is called a hexadentate ligand. The best example for a hexadentate ligand is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid abbreviated as EDTA. Now see the structure of EDTA. Ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. That means this is the basic compound ethylene diamine 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 acetic acid groups are attached. What are the donor atoms here? 1 nitrogen atom, 2nd nitrogen atom, 2 donor atom. This is the 3rd donor atom. This is the 4th donor atom. This is the 5th and this is the 6th donor atom. So, 2 nitrogen atom and 4 oxygen atom comprise the hexadentity of ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. So, exam point of view, this is an important question. Give an example for hexadentate ligand. EDT is an example for hexadentate ligand. Or, the density of EDT is dash. The density of EDT is 6. Now, what are chelating ligands or chelating ligands? When a bidentate or a polydentate ligand forms a coordinate bond with the metal atom or ion, it results in the formation of a ring structure. That means the donor atoms make coordinate bond with the central metal atom or ion resulting the formation of a ring shaped structure such a type of ligands which can form closed or cyclic ring structure compounds are called chelating ligands and the resulting coordination compound is called chelates now see here when we are taking the example ethylene diamine ethylene diamine is having two donor atom two nitrogen atom. These two nitrogen atom is bonded to the central metal atom resulting the formation of a five-membered ring, five-membered ring. So a ring structure is formed by the bonding between the ligands and metal. Such type of ligands are called chelating ligands and such type of complexes are called chelates. When Chelating ligands make bond with the central metal atom or ion, the stability increases. 
This is called the chelation effect. Chelation effect. Another group of ligands are called amphidentate ligands. Amphidentate ligands have two donor atoms, but it coordinates to the central metal atom through only one donor atom. That means the ligand consists of two donor atoms and appears as a bidentate ligand. But during bond formation with the central metal atom or ion, it do in such a way that only one atom makes the bond with the central metal atom. Such a type of ligands are called amphitendate ligands. Now see here example. I have the example. First one is NO2. NO2 minus is an amphitendate ligand. Because it have two donor atoms, nitrogen and oxygen. But when it combines with the metal, either oxygen or nitrogen makes bond with the central metal atom. That means simultaneously nitrogen and oxygen does not make coordinate bond. Another example is SCN minus. In case of SCN minus, Sulfur and nitrogen are donor atoms, but only one can be linked to the metal at a time, either sulfur or nitrogen. Another example is Cn minus cyanide ion. Here two donor atoms are there, carbon and nitrogen, but only one can be linked with the metal, either carbon or nitrogen. Such type of ligands which coordinate to the central metal atom only by an atom even though it contains more than one donor atom, are called amphidendate ligands. So, my dear students, please take down the notes and prepare. This semester will go very fast and by April end, you may have the examination of semester 6. So, please be careful and take down the notes. So, we meet again on next Thursday. Till then, see you. Thank you.